How do I think the recording industry has changed over the last 10 years? That's a great question. I, I, I think a big thing for me is the, su the success of unprofessional techniques. People in their bedrooms doing whatever they do. It's got nothing to do with how we actually make records, but then it comes out and it's a successful, connective musical experience with their audience. So then as a professional, because I'm curious, I'm listening to that thing going, why did it connect? And is there something that I need to learn from that in order to connect? I'm seeing more and more of that, uh, more and more of a, of a non-traditional, unprofessional approach to music and musicality and that thing getting distributed and actually being received well by an audience. The other thing that I think has changed is um, plugins are delivering to the unprofessional a professional concept that the unprofessional doesn't really even know how or why it works, but they just turn it on and it's, oh, it sounds great. Um, and it's really funny because a lot of the things that are being used, I'll give you an example, Echo Boy. Echo Boy has a parameter where you go into the tweak button and you can go from the phantom image to a wider stereo image. Well, I actually know why that's happening and the average person probably doesn't have a clue why it's happening, but it sounds really, really cool. Uh, it's strange. How, how will my job, the job of the engineer slash producer change over the next few years? Um, well, the surfaces that we work with are evolving and changing. Uh, I know that uh, Stephen Slate has this console that's basically a big silicon screen that's touch sensitive, and that's interesting. It's kind of like the minority report thing. I do see us going there. That's probably where we're trying to get to, where we can just kind of raise our hand and the, the volume comes up and we clench our fist and it gets more low end and disperse it and it gets more high end. You know, the immersive concept is an interesting one if somebody can figure it out. And uh, so I'm not going to, I don't want to say it'll never happen because we only have two years. But at the same time, somebody's got to come along with something really, really um, innovative and groundbreaking so that somebody like me won't listen to phantom images and go, well, that's just a playing of uh, a fiddling around with phase images. You know, the actual centered signal is different from a phantom image. And if you want to really be immersed in audio, we've got to have multiple points of contact. And I want to have those multiple points of contact as I'm walking from my couch to my kitchen. <laughs> so whoever figures that out is going to get really rich. So distribution, I'm not really sure where we're going to go. The listening experience. I, I, you know, once again, we have two ears. The way the creativity and the shape of the sound, that's been morphing and doing a lot of strange things. And I can see in 15 years that I'll turn on a radio and I won't understand anything. And that'll be a good thing because each generation is supposed to do that. Mm -hmm.